Is the new Mac Mini the perfect Ableton Live computer? Well, after using it for a week, I have some thoughts and I think I know the answer. Now, self-admittedly, I'm a huge Mac Mini fan. I had the original Mac Mini, I had the Mac Mini when Apple got a little happy with the soldering iron and took away our ability to replace the RAM, and now I have the new Mac Mini. And I have to say, Apple really outdid themselves with this one. They saved the best for last, for sure. With six cores, with the ability to replace RAM on your own, this is a great machine. Now you might be wondering which Mac Mini did I get? So I decided to go with the base level i5. I didn't do the i3, but I did the base level i5 Mac Mini with eight gigs of RAM. And my thinking was one, it's a pretty affordable machine. I think it was $1,200 with shipping, with tax, all that included. And then I thought too, it's a machine that almost anyone could get. I ordered it, it was here two days later. And my thought was, if this guy is powerful enough, obviously any other machine above that is gonna be even better. If I upgrade it to the i7, if I put more RAM in it, it's gonna be great. My other thought too, and again, this is one of the things I really like about this Mac Mini, is you can replace the RAM on your own. So I thought I'm gonna get the eight gig uh, machine, eight gig RAM, and then I can replace memory on my own and go to 16, 32, or even 64, which is crazy. 64 gigs of RAM and a Mac mini, that's insane. I have to say, I can really tell the difference going from my dual core MacBook Pro, even my quad core MacBook Pro to this Mac mini. Uh, it's an incredible machine. Apple really tried to go with a pro machine and a very small form factor. Now, one of the questions I got a lot on social media when I said I was gonna do a review of the Mac mini was, does it work for me in the studio? Can I buy this as a computer and use it in the studio? So I thought there's a few different things that I wanna run through, a few different tests to try to see how how does this work as a studio machine? Now, the first thing I wanted to do was look at this from a production standpoint. Now, for you producers out there, you need a machine that responds instantly. You can't wait for a preset to load. You don't want to be in the moment and lose the inspiration because you're waiting for a preset or plugin to load. It needs to respond instantly. So the first thing I thought I'd do is just load some plugins. So I loaded Omnisphere, I loaded Contact using the Giant, and I have to say they loaded instantly, uh, loading different samples and presets and Omnisphere, they responded immediately. So I was able to play uh, as soon as I loaded a preset instantly and get an idea. Is that the sound I want? Is that what's going to work for me? But I thought, okay, this is, this is easy. This is simple. I need to push it a little bit further to see what the limits are. So I decided I'd load an instance of Omnisphere with uh, eight presets going all at once in a multi. And I uh, was running at 48K was my sample rate and decided, let me start with my buffer size all the way down at 32. And I'll say at 32, 48K, I started to get a little bit of kind of the bit rate, kind of the, the crunchiness. So again, when that happens, we all know we just raise our buffer size up until that goes away. So I increased my buffer size to 64 samples and I have to say it went away immediately. It was still a, a fairly latent free uh, playing experience, which was great. And the audio sounded great. So that was very, very good to experience. Now, the other thing is I thought, okay, let me keep that instance of Omnisphere. Let me add two instances of contact player using the giant and on one of them, I actually loaded two different giant presets going at the same time. And again, staying at 48K, dropping my buffer size to 64 uh, samples, it played perfectly. Again, latent free experience uh, with all those presets going at once. Now walking away from that, one thing I can definitely say is if you're gonna use this in the studio with a lot of external plugins for MIDI, for playing drum beats, for playing synths, then I would encourage you definitely go with the i7 model and then go ahead and increase the amount of RAM that you have, either by purchasing it beforehand with Apple or upgrade it after the fact by yourself. I think you'll have a smoother, better experience. But again, for me, using a couple plugins, I was able to keep the latency really low and still have a very responsive experience experience. So let's talk about recording now. Let's say you're in the studio and you want to record a live band. How's the Mac Mini going to handle that? So to simulate this, what I did is I set up a session where I basically played 16 tracks from one computer into this Mac Mini to see how it handled it. And I have to say, running at 32 samples, processing those 16 tracks, it did not even break a sweat. I think it got up to 2% CPU. Handled it incredibly, incredibly well. So I think in a live tracking environment with a band, you'll be able to handle probably as many inputs as you can throw at this, and it's going to handle it incredibly well. Again, 48K, 
32 samples, not an issue at all. Now, but I thought, let's see if we can push this a little further. So I said, let me add some plugins to each of these tracks. Now, if you're tracking a live band in the studio, uh, you probably don't wanna add plugins to your tracks. You wanna hear the incoming signal, but I thought, let's do it anyway. So I threw a few plugins on each of the tracks in Ableton to see, okay, what's the experience? Now my CPU increased slightly, uh, but not substantially, and the audio was still clear. I could hear it, uh, everything responded really well. So I thought, let's push this even further. So I decided to add every single plugin that's included in Ableton Live Suite to each of my tracks, right? So all however many plugins that is to each one of my 16 tracks. And again, barely broke a sweat. So I think from a recording uh, experience for a recording environment, if you're in a recording studio, tracking a band, capturing a live band, even the Mac mini I got, i5, uh, eight gigs of RAM, incredible experience and is gonna be very snappy and responsive for you. Now we talked about it for studio use, but how about using it live? Now the Mac mini might seem like an odd choice as a computer to use live, right? You gotta have a keyboard, you gotta have a mouse, you have to have a monitor, but I actually think it's a great solution for live use. One, if you already have a keyboard, a mouse, and a monitor, just throw in this new Mac mini and suddenly you have a brand new, faster experience, which is great. The other thing is if you're looking to build a redundant rig, then the question of, okay, what computer should I buy? The answer can no longer be, well, the fastest computer that your money can get you, because we need to divide that into two, right? We need two machines. And it's it's best, it's always the thing I've kind of practiced is try to get the same exact models and types of machine when you're using and building a redundant rig. So a Mac mini is a perfect solution for this. Uh, buy two Mac minis, again, I did the i5, eight gigs of RAM, I might upgrade to 16 after the fact, and it's handled tracks really, really well. So you can buy two Mac minis for about the price of one comparable MacBook Pro at that same speed, same amount of RAM. Load them into the Sonnet, I think it's called the Rack Mini. Really cool uh, 1U rack space that allows you to put both Mac Minis next to each other. Add a Play Audio 12, your keyboard, mouse, and monitor, all in one rack, and you've got an excellent self-contained redundant rig. Now, if you're doing a redundant rig, you could also get really creative and use a multi-view like the Blackmagic multi-view or KVM switch so you can use one monitor, see both computers at the same time, and one keyboard and mouse to control both machines. But again, that's crazy talk, so maybe don't do that. As a live machine, I think this Mac Mini is a great choice, especially if you're playing tracks. I would suggest just getting the exact model that I got. The i5 Mac Mini, eight gigs of RAM, it responded incredibly, incredibly well. When I'd open Ableton Live files, it would open right away. Uh, when I would move around in the file and edit, it never lagged, it never took a little bit, it responded well. Even opening a larger Ableton Live set, it just opened right up, which is great. Now, if you're looking to use this again, on stage with keys uh, to process multiple plugins or even internal sounds, that's where I'd probably encourage you to upgrade to the i7, put a little bit more RAM in the machine. I think you'll have an even better response than what I had with the i5 and eight gigs. So which Mac mini should you get? Now, I get the question all the time, hey, what computer should I buy? And I used to always say, well, get the fastest computer that you can get for your money. I think that's kind of a dumb response now. Uh, partially because a lot of times, you need to get two machines, either one for tracks, one for keys, or a redundant rig, and suddenly the fastest machine you can buy has to be multiplied by two instead of just one. And this Mac Mini had a lot to do with that response. I think if you're looking for a computer that you can throw into your studio, you already have a keyboard, a mouse, a monitor, uh, and you are recording, uh, I think this Mac Mini is a perfect solution for you. If you're looking for a computer to run tracks on, Again, perfect solution for you. If you're looking for something to run a lot of plugins on uh, to use for keys, I think it's a great solution. Again, I would just encourage you upgrade to the i7 and either add some more RAM after the fact or go ahead and pay the extra to have Apple add it for you straight from the factory. All in all, I've been really impressed with this Mac Mini. I think if you're in the market for a new computer, you're looking to get a Mac and you use Ableton Live, I don't think there's a better computer you can use than this.